stand with me as we share together God's good news, and I'll read it for you and read it for us. It's out of Matthew 13. It's the parable about the sower. On that day went Jesus out of the house, set by the seaside. There were gathered unto him great multitudes, so that he entered into a boat and sat, and all the multitudes stood on the beach. And he spake to them many things in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. And others fell upon the rocky places where they had not much earth. And straightway they sprang up, and because they had no deepness in the earth, when the sun was risen, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered quickly away. Others fell upon the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. And others fell upon the good ground and yielded fruit, some hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Hear you then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the evil one and snatches away that which has been sown in his heart. This is he that was sown by the wayside. And he that it was sown upon the rocky places, this is he that hears the word and straightway with joy receives it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but endures for just a, a little while. And when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, straightway he stumbles. And he that was sown among the thorns, this is he that hears the word and the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. And he that was sown upon good ground, this is he that hears the word, understands it, who verily bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirtyfold. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You can be seated. Not much, but enough. Not much, but enough. I have a, uh, uh, our, our, our caboose and our long train is Aaron. And Aaron and I, because there's a long gap between the last one and him, we got to hang out a whole lot as he grew up. And, and we spent a whole lot of, uh, of us time, you know what I'm saying? And so Aaron be the kid that he is, and me being the father that I am, being older and so much more mature than when we had the first grouping, I thought, you know, that I'm there now, you know. I'm, 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 I'm mature, I'm good, I've gone through kids. I got this. Aaron has a Aaron has a habit. He knows the buttons that he can push on me that just really send me off that precipice. You know what I mean? Okay. Here's what he does. I'm driving and I'm driving from where I live to my mother's house while she was yet living. And we had to go through Meridian to get there and she lived below that place, a place called Stonewall. So when we got in the car and I got out the driveway, you uh, I bet can guess what my son said. I'm hungry. When are we going to eat? I'm like, dude, we just left the house. You just had bread. I'm hungry. What are we going to eat? I'm hungry. When are we going to eat? I'm hungry. You know the same song, second verse thing? So I'm driving, 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 and after about 15, 17 minutes of this, I've just about had all of this I can handle. You know what I mean? So you know what I did? Remember, not, not much, but enough. I pulled into Sam's parking lot. You know where I'm going? I pulled into Sam's parking lot. I grabbed him by the hand. We walked through the door, showed them my card, walked in there, and every kiosk I found, I said, try some. <laughs> try some. I'm buying. Enjoy all you can. I'm buying. Have all the fun you want. I took him by the hand. We went to every kiosk two or three times. We went to one, and the lady said, haven't you been here before? And I said, he, I have, but he's hungry. So she gave him another one. Can you feel my pain? Let me tell you something. I said, you okay? Well, I guess for a little bit. Not much. Not much. But enough. Now, we can go into the negative. It doesn't take a whole lot of nagging to push me off the precipice. You know what I mean? It doesn't take a whole lot of negativism to push me off that precipice. It doesn't take a whole lot of fussing. It doesn't take a whole lot of things to push me right off that edge. Not much but just enough. But let's put it in the good side. This parable before us this day, it has that embedded in it. Not much, but enough. Let's look at it. And again, I want you to play Sherlock Holmes with me. It's found in three at least Gospels. Matthew 13, Luke 4, 
and Mark 4, I should say, and Luke 8. But again, I will remind you, but so you get the content and context, you've got to back up and figure out who's talking, who's he talking about, who's he talking to, why is he talking, what's behind it, what's in front of it, what's inside of it. If you back up and play Sherlock Holmes and you look at these, four, these Gospels, the story is, as you, as you put it all together, that Jesus has gone to Capernaum by the Sea of Galilee, and he's at the house of Simon Peter, and Simon Peter's mother is sick, and he does the healing thing, the roof and all that kind of stuff, the, the, the two-by-four, the, the guy that's let, let down by the four friends. All that's in this story, but it's the before story. So as he's doing this, people are coming in and being healed and being sent forth, and a lot of good stuff's going on. And then he leaves for a missionary tour, comes back, and he's at the house. And as he's at the house, you know what happens? You got some self-righteous dudes show up called Pharisees. They can't stand him. Cannot stand Jesus because Jesus don't look like us. Jesus don't walk like us. Jesus don't talk like us. Jesus doesn't go to church like he spoke. And so these, these guys are on him bad, man. You know why? Because they believe the lie. I'm better than everybody else because of what I do. Because of the prayers that I pray, the things that I do, I'm better than everybody else. You, have you ever met anybody like that? You'd be surprised. There's Pharisees all around us and among us, aren't they? They believe they're somebody because they believe they have an inside track on Jesus. You know what I mean? They believe when they open the Word of God up and God speaks to them, God's speaking only to them and the rest of us, we just don't know. We ain't clued in. And so they want to they do everything they can to share God's good news, not to themselves, but to we who just had not got a clue. And so these guys are there. If you read the stories, you got mama and kinfolk out there too. It says because of the press, they can't get in there. So they're outside, and, and I'm just thinking, mama shows up, and mama says, you know, there's my boy in there, but I can't get to him. So she tells somebody, go tell Jesus that we're out here and we want to talk to him. So somebody walks up and says, hey, Jesus, your mama and your kinfolks, they out there, and, and they want a, a word with you. And I like this part. Jesus stopped for a moment. And he said, come on now. These, these, those who hear the Word of God, hear the Word of God. Those that do the things of God, those that seek to serve the kingdom, those that seek to be involved in kingdom growth, and those are my brothers, and those are my sisters, and those are my mothers, and those are my fathers. And so mom and the kinfolk stayed outside until they got through. I like that too. And then he gives this parable because I'd remind you, who's there? If we're going to look at this parable, who's there? The spectators. You got Mama and Bubba and Sissy. They're there. You got those that have been healed and touched by the hand of God. They're there. You've got the Pharisees, the self-righteous God's police force. They're there. You got those that are curious, those that are struggling, those that are hopeful, those that are hurting, those that are broken, those that are fractured, those that are struggling and suffering just like you. And they're there. And as Jesus looks around at that crowd that morning, he looks at those spectators, <clears throat> and he delivers this beautiful message. Not much, but enough. And so if we look at the spectators and this parable, what, what else? Uh, he goes straight to the sower. Sometimes we impose upon the Scripture a 20, 21st century mentality, and it can't be. In that day, the tracks of land were short and narrow, long and length of ground. And on the sideways, on the side of every parcel of ground, so that people wouldn't be tromping up and down the middle of it, they had a footpath. So you've got this. You've got a narrow track of land where you can sow seed. Around that, to, 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 to partition off your parcel, normally there's cactus. It could have changed, but I doubt. There's cactus, there's trees, there's rocks, there's, there's, there's something to, to, to show you that this belongs to me. You've got a pathway down the side of this thing so the people can walk through your land and not be stomping up and down on it. And then you've got this guy who's a sower. Now, I, I've been over there, and I, I, I've watched this stuff, not, not just in Israel, but in the Middle East, and they still do it, I would believe, like they did in that day. You got somebody that steps out on this side, and they're in the wind. They find, you know, they find the wind which way it's blowing. Got this big old seed sack on the front of them. Some may be having in the back, but they've got a seed sack on them. And you got a lead guy steps out, and he's on this side. He steps out a little bit, and you got a guy behind him. He steps out a little bit, and you got a guy behind him. If he's got workers, if not, he does it himself. 
he finds out which way is the wind blowing, and he takes off. And he takes off, he reaches in there, and he grabs his handful of seed, and he throws it. And the wind blows it. And so you got these guys reaching in, throwing, 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 throwing. Walking down, and they get all the way to the end, they'll flip back, and here they come again. Throwing, throwing, throwing. And as they throw that seed, the seed just scatters all over the place. You know what I mean? You ever, you ever thrown stuff in a dust storm or a windstorm? You can understand. This stuff is just scattering everywhere. This is the background. This is the story, and this is what Jesus says. Look, let's look at the sower. He says, a sower went forth to sow. I would say to you, I would, I would propose these, uh, these thoughts. The sower sows plentifully. The sower doesn't do this. Uh, I, I, I just can't afford to, to put all this seed out there because this is kind of unpredictable. I mean, I got a pathway over here, and I may waste some seed. I got a stone wall over there, I might waste seed. I mean, it may blow it over, God forbid, in somebody else's ground. Then I just wasted all my effort. I mean, I just, I need to be stingy. I need to be frugal. I need to be cheap. So it doesn't do that. He reaches in, he reaches out, and he sees his handful of seed, and he just throws it, man. He sows plentifully. He sows passionately. I'm, man, these guys get happy. You know what I'm saying? It may be a Middle Eastern mentality thing. I don't think so. You got a job to do? Do it, man. Have fun. You know what I was always taught? Maybe y'all have been too. I'm going to have fun. I don't care if you do or not. You know what I mean? I don't care. I'm going to have the most fun I can stand when I'm doing whatever it is. I, you know why? I love what I do. Don't you? I love it. I'm like Bruce. When, it, when it's no longer fun, I'm going to hang my guns up. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to hang them up and go home. But I love, I love ministry. I love preaching, love teaching, love Jesus, love the gospel. I love this stuff. I love it. And so I'm passionate about it, man. I'm, I mean, I love this stuff. Those guys out there, they were having themselves a date. And it may not be every time, but this time when I saw them, throwing it, man. They're reaching in, they're throwing it. They're reaching in, they're throwing it. And the guy behind them, he's reaching in, they're throwing it. They're throwing stuff, man. I mean, raising up a big old dust cloud. None of them looked and said, I don't know if I can do this. They're just reaching in and throwing it, reaching in and throwing it, reaching in and throwing it, throwing plentifully and sowing passionately, but also purposefully. He knows exactly whose ground he's sowing in. It's his. He's not trying to see the other guys. He's trying to see himself. And so he has a vested interest. He wants to give what he's got to what is his. He wants to put the seed on his land. He wants to do it. He, he has purpose behind that which he does. He has passion behind what he does. He has a purpose behind what he does. I, I'd ask that about us. This is our field, isn't it? This is our field. God has allowed us the privilege, you and I and we together. This is our field. This is where God has placed us. Are you passionate about this church? I'm sure that you are. When we approach God, do we reach into our bag of gifts and graces and do we, do we sow plentifully? Do we reach in there and just throw it out there, give all that we've got, if you would? Have you got gifts? Are you giving them to God? Have you got graces? Are you giving them to God? Have you got anything that God wants? People say, oh, Brother Limba, I can't do anything. Well, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Take a look. Take a look. Because 30 years ago, when God's knocking on my door, I'm like, no, <laughs> no, you don't want me. No, you can't use me. All that I've done, where I've been, the stuff in my life, my past, all that kind of story stuff, all that stuff, all of... Have y'all heard me talk? I'm just asking. I bet if you're an English teacher, you walk out of here thinking, oh my gosh, I got to know nothing about it. I, I got that. Okay. Have you heard me? Sure you have. But you know what? God doesn't care the package that it comes in. God cares about the heart and the package. You know what I mean? God cares about what's inside of us, not what's out here. God, can, God, God doesn't need any one of us, but God allows every one of us to be useful and to be used in kingdom building. Where we are, where we can, where opportunities and obstacles arise, God graces us and God gifts us with all kinds of stuff to be invested in his kingdom. Hallelujah. And so we have a purpose. Do all that we do, do for Jesus. We have a passion. We should do what we do because we love Jesus. We should have a sense of... Uh, free handedness that what it is whatever it is we've got God gave it so let's give it and patience as well I don't have a lot of patience you know you guys remember in school when your teacher would do that 
What's that stuff called? The chia plant? Was that a chia plant? You got something and it grows fur like overnight? Y'all remember them things? You know why they did that? Because they know kids don't have patience. I don't have patience. I, I, when, when my grandmother and granddaddy was trying to teach me how to, to farm, and I'm walking behind them, and, you know, you stick the thing in, stick the seed in, put the fertilizer in, put the water in, cover it up, and go. You know what I do the next morning? I'll run out there and I'm looking. I won't see nothing yet. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm a little bitty fella, but I mean, I'm thinking, hey, wait a minute now. I'll go to the grocery store, and there it is on the shelf. But you telling me it's going to grow, but I put it in the ground. I don't see nothing. And I did everything you told me to. I stomped on it. I put water in it. I put fertilizer in it. I did it. I've done my part. How come it ain't growing? You got to have patience, don't you? In a few days, you might see a sprout. In a few weeks, you might see a sprout. And, and, and time, you will see something. Amen? And so God says for we who are sowers, and we all are, that when we sow the seed, do it passionately. Give it everything you got. Do it purposefully. Have a plan, work the plan. Do it patiently too. Maybe what God wants out of us is not tomorrow or next week or even next year. What God does is God places us in his plan and God invests himself in us so that down the road of peace, good stuff happens, doesn't it? Okay, the sower. Let's look at the seed. You realize that seeds are powerful? Seeds are powerful. There's a lot of things I don't know about farming. There's one thing I did figure out. It didn't take me too long. Papa said to me, and, and you'd have to know my Papa, and he's dead and gone now, but my Papa would say that he sent me, and I, I got tired of that. I'm like, quit talking. Let's just do. No, God's the same way. We need to, we need to know what we do before we just start doing. So Papa sent me down, and we was planting corn. And he would say, son, do you realize how much potential this has? What? Do you realize how powerful seeds are? Do you realize that one kernel of corn has the potential to grow a stalk? And on that stalk it has several ears. So one little bitty kernel, one little bitty seed can produce all this stuff. How cool is that? You have to know my papa. When we're planting butter beans or watermelons or squash or anything, Papa, look, man, look at the potential. Look how powerful this is. Every one of us has the potential, and every one of us has the power to do great things. you got to believe, man. you got to believe. Like the, the, the mess back in 72, you got to believe. And so every one of us has potential. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God can use you where you are like you are and grow the kingdom? Do you believe that? If you don't, you need to get on board because you can. God doesn't waste his effort. God doesn't waste himself. God has placed within, the, within every human vessel the potential of, uh, of great things, powerful and, 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 and purposeful. And God gives us the ability to grow ourselves and grow the kingdom. So uh, seeds are powerful and seeds are productive. The problem is not with the sower. The problem is not with the seed. The problem is always with the soul. We're given four. One is a hard and stubborn heart. Sometimes, and the, and the sower knows this, but he does it anyhow. The sower knows I'm going to put some seed on that pathway. The sower knows I'm going to waste some seed. The sower knows that. But does that stop him? Does it mess up his plans? Does it mess up his purpose? Does it mess up his passion? Does it mess up anything about that sower knowing that no matter what he does, no more, no, knowing, no matter how careful he may be, knowing that no matter what he's going to throw away some seed? Does that stop him? No. So how come it stops us? We use it to justify not doing anything for Jesus. Well, they don't care about God. Who knows? They don't want to hear me. Who knows? They won't listen to me. Who knows? Who knows till we sow the seed? Who knows until we go out into the highways and byways and sow the seed of, the, of, of gospel and grace and love and mercy and reconciliation and forgiveness and all that God is and all that God is. Who knows what God can do? Sower didn't know. He just knew that it, 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 it could be. He just knew it might be. Let me share with you a, a hope and prayer. If we, have the, if we have that same mentality this year, you know what God's going to do? God's going to bless us, and we're going to grow this place. You believe that? Now, come on now. I'm just talking. You can tell me one way or the other. It doesn't matter. You'll tell by your actions or attitudes. If you want to grow this thing, we can grow it, can't we? It ain't on the side of God, is it? Not on the side of the Holy Spirit, is it? Not on the side of the sower, is it? It's the ground. 
And so maybe there's people out there that could care less. Okay, fine. You know what Jesus did? He said, dust off, let's go. Didn't he? He said, if you go to a place that will not receive your word, what did he say do? Shake the dust off of them and tell them this. Okay, you miss out, but there's somebody else that will listen. Go after the ones that will listen. If they won't listen, go find somebody that does. So yes, we will waste seed. Yes, there will be unproductive ground. Yes, there will be those that could care less, but there will always be others. There will be some that are shallow. Oh, my Lord. If I could give you a dollar for everyone I've met in the last 30 years of ministry, I'd be a rich man. I, I get concerned when somebody's like, Woohoo! Hallelujah! Man, when you all bubbly, that doesn't tell me anything except you bubbly. But if I watch you long enough, you're going to tell me who you really are way down deep in your heart and soul. If you all top water and all superficial, don't mean a thing to me or Jesus as far as that goes. Because what we do on the outside normally doesn't mean a whole lot. But whether you can stick on the side, you know what I see? People up here that are all happy about this thing, when trouble comes, they run, don't they? How many have we seen in whatever church you belong to that when trouble, trials, and tribulation come, they pack up and go home and take their marbles with them, don't they? You know why? Because there's no root to them. There's no, there's no depth to them. It's all shallow water stuff. Anybody can jump out there and flap on the, on the top of the water. I, I did that. I'm not a good swimmer, but I beat that water slam to death. You know what I mean? Then I learned how to swim. So I did better. But when I first got out there, I'm just floundering, man. I'm just slapping and going. That's what we do as babies in Christ. But if you stick in the saddle long enough, if you stick with that thing, no matter how difficult it may be, if you stick with that thing, I promise you, God will grow us in spite of ourselves. So, yes, we're going to have some trouble with the hardened hearts. Yes, we're going to have trouble with those that are shallow and superficial and those that are all top water and all those that run on emotion and all those that run on the fluff and stuff, the cotton candy stuff of religion. But there's also those that, God bless them, they receive it. They receive their word with gladness of heart, truly saved, but truly saved yet unstructured and unlearned. Here's what happens. They come to Jesus, hallelujah, and then jobs and family and life and stuff suck Jesus right out of them, doesn't it? We've met them. We, you may be one of those people. Boy, how much I love Jesus. And then we lose our job. Or we have financial trouble. Or we have health trouble. Or we have family trouble. Or we have employer trouble. Or we have employee trouble. Or we have church trouble. Or we have all kinds of trouble, don't we? And then we get mad, don't we? And then we get prickly, don't we? Me too. Me too. And when that happens, I have a choice, and you do too. When those things happen, I can say, no, no. <laughs> No, no. It's like a kidney stone. This too shall pass. You know what I'm saying? This too shall pass. And I can stick in the saddle and I can hold on for the ride no matter where it may take me. I can hold on and pray, God, let this thing in soon, please. It may and it may not. But if you are willing to stick in the saddle, if you are willing to take the hit, if you're willing to hold on just a little bit, if you're willing to do that, it will pass. And those troubles and trials and problems and difficulties, God has a way of smoothing and helping those things out. Are giving grace for the need. Do you believe that? Come on now. you believe that? Either you do or you don't. And how you believe and what you believe determines the outlook out there and the inlook in here. If you say it with your mouth and you don't believe it in your heart, you will have a miserable, miserable life. We have those hard, hardened hearts. We have the superficial hearts. We have the selfish hearts. They're more interested in stuff than they are in Jesus. More interested in me than in Jesus. More interested in things than in Jesus. More interested in being popular than Jesus. More interested in being happy and all that kind of stuff that really doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter at all. Distractions are out there. Deceitfulness is out there. Desires are out there. All kinds of stuff. But, but thank God for the last one. Soft heart. Soft heart. Not much. Not much. But enough. I'd notice two things in closing. One is this. The soul, though productive, does not produce the same. I'm not being smart, but did you get that? The soul, though productive, 
doesn't produce the same. What did Jesus say? Some produces a hundredfold. Some produces 60-fold. Some produces 30-fold. It produces, but not the same. Might I also share with you another truth that just hurts clean to the bone? One plus one is two, isn't it? Now, you can have 100% of one, and you still ain't got a whole lot, do you? Or you can have 60% of 100, and you got a whole lot more, don't you? Don, uh, Mr. Waldorf, Milton Waldorf, I uh, worked in, the, in, in Hattiesburg for a while selling men's suits. Hickey Freeman's suits and some high-dollar stuff. And Mr. Waldorf would always take us, as he was training us, and he would say, You know what, Lynn? I don't want 100%. What? What? <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm giving you all I got. I don't want 100%. I want more than that. What's he saying? What was he saying to me? And I'll tell you what he was. Because I bet you've had the same thing said to you. If all you can give me is 30%, I don't need your best. I need more. If all you can give me is 60%, I don't need your, I don't need just, I need more. But if that's all you can do and you've done everything you can, hallelujah. Amen. When you've done everything you can and that's all you can do, okay. But if you justify the fact that you can't do it and you hold back on God because you can't do it, then you don't get anything done. And I don't need your best, and God doesn't need your best, and we don't need your best. We need your all. Amen? And if every one of us gives everything we got, every opportunity, every time that God shows himself, if every one of us gives everything we got all the time, you know what? I bet we'll make an impression on somebody, don't you? All right. There'll be hardened souls. There'll be shallow soul. There'll be superficial soul. There'll be good soul. But it is a process. The soul has to be prepared. And the sower has to do his work. And the seed has to be not sterile, but fertile. And again, it's not on the sower, not on the seed. It's on the soil. And so although it is a process, once you sow the seed, there's still some seeding to be done. There's weeding to be done. There's watering to be done. There's fertilizing to be done. There's caring to be done. There's commitment to be made. There's faithfulness required. All that kind of stuff is necessary if once we do the sowing, we get the harvest. Amen? And so it's not enough for us to say, boy, I'm going to go out there and we'll tell somebody about Jesus. Go tell them. Go tell them. But then follow through too. When you tell them, go knock on that door again. When you tell them, make a follow through. When you tell them, swing through this thing. When you tell them, back it up a little bit. Don't just go up there and say, I'm going to pray. Okay. So you, we pray. Lord, save that soul near his tail. Who is it? Put a name to it. Lord, we're going to go. We, we need some people and whatever. You can fill in the blank any way you choose to. But what I see in this parable is a truism found throughout Scripture. Pray all you want to, but then put some feet to that prayer. Pray all you choose to, but then once you pray and once you start this thing, stick on for the ride. Hang in for the ride. Go where the ride takes us. Take advantage of opportunities and obstacles wherever they may find themselves because in darkness God shines the light, and in the light God shows himself too. And so if we want to grow this thing and be all that we can be, sow the seed and pray and work, and do all that you can do, and trust God for the results. Amen? I'm not, I'm not responsible for the harvest. Hear what I'm saying? I am not responsible for the harvest. I'm responsible for the sowing. Amen? I'm responsible for the sowing, not the harvest. That's his business. Do your job. God does his job. Amen? Amen.